Hey everybody, Zeke Garcia here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a deck building game in which you are going through your whole life making decisions along the way. This is my story. So yeah, this is basically the game of life for gamers. It's a deck building game, like I said, you are going to be collecting resources, using them to buy new cards, possibly changing your profession, completing projects along the way, trying to get the most victory points, all right? The game has a very striking look, as you can see, comes in a fairly small box, and there's not a lot of uh, components in it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the game works. I'm going to show you on the table. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. So here we're taking a look at the game, what the game might look like set up for three players. I am only going to be showing you the, uh, the space on the table for one player, though. So everyone's going to have one of these boards. These tokens here in the starting area, they are all dealt two professions. You're going to start with one that's your opening profession. The other one gets shuffled into your opening deck. And then we've got our, uh, our pawns up here at 22, which represents our age. So in the game, we are going to be playing cards from our deck. We are going to be collecting points in various resources like, uh, uh, you know, home life and uh, intelligence or studies, hobbies and health, various things like that. We are going to be spending time and those resources in order to acquire these things out here. We've got two decks of cards. This one is for life story, events, things you're into, things you do. This one up here is for occupations and then also projects you would hope to complete. And so they come in those two different kinds. These two over here, the bottom symbol lets you know they're occupations. These are things you're hoping to achieve, to complete. There's also this area up here that begins empty and will uh, come into play once we all get to 30 years of age. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and take a turn. So at the very beginning of the game, the first thing I do is the planning phase in which I play my hand out. In this case, it's going to be four cards. Now, you they say you do draw a hand, but really you could play from the top of the deck if you wanted to. So it's these four. I would just put these out in front of me. So there we go. And now I am going to grab all of the things that this, uh, all of the different icons that these cards give me. So I'm going to get one of those, and I just move the matching token one up. The uh, star is wild, so I'll take one of those. I'll take the book, and I'm going to get the uh, hobby over here for one as well. You will notice that this one with the star will cycle out of your deck after 35. So once I hit 35, I'll get it one time after that, then it's going to cycle away. I no longer have a young heart at that point. So that's the first thing I do. Next thing I do is I check over here in my CV if any of those cards trigger. The bottom lets me know if it happens. So if I had flipped a yellow card, this one would have been uh, triggered and it would have happened. I would have gotten a coin. However, that's not the case. And then lastly, I check the special ability, my profession. For a yellow card I would have flipped, I get two coins. Again, that does not happen. That's it for this first phase. Then we go to the second phase, in which I may do two things, but I have to do at least one, okay? And the two things are as follows. The first one, exploring. I will acquire a card from this lineup, or from this lineup, or eventually from this lineup here, okay? If I uh, choose to do that, I'm going to pay the resources across the top, in this case, the combination of what's printed on there plus what's on the card top. That's going to cost me time, coins, all of the resources. If I do the one up here, just what's printed on the board. They don't have a cost at the top, all right? Once I do that, I'm going to acquire the card, put it in my own discard pile. And uh, that's basically it. I'll explain this in a bit. The other one is self-growing, in which I take a card I flipped after obviously having purchased it, having it cycle through my deck and show back up. I could take one of these and add it to my CV. If I do it on a project, I complete that project. For example, if I do this one here and I choose to do this self-growth, I'm going to pay the cost down the side. It's three years, the book symbol, the house symbol, 
and then I tuck this under my CV like that. Okay, it's going to be worth three victory points. Uh, it also will give me uh, the ability to draw an extra card again if the color trip uh, happens. The other kind of card I can complete is, like I said, one of these professions. If I do that and I want to become a food truck owner, I will do the same thing. I'll pay what's along the side here and then I'll put it on top of the stack. The bottom of the last one is still revealed, but now I have a new profession with a new special ability up here at the top. All right. So taking a look at my example here, this is what I've got. Let's take a look. I need to do, like I said, at least one of these two. So I've got uh, the ability to take that food truck owner card. So it's going to cost me one time, which I'll move up on the track. The book symbol, which I will back up on here. And then the smiley face symbol, like so. I'm going to take it. I'm going to discard that. And then I am not doing self-growing because I cannot. And I get to the final refreshing phase here in which I discard all this. I'm going to scoot these over and replenish those with this. Okay. However, you have to make sure that the ones with victory points are uh, closer to the back here than any without. So in this case, I don't actually scoot everything over and put that there with no victory points. I'm going to put this after this one and after this one and after this one because they have points on them. All right, that's it for me. At the end of your turn, you also lose any of these resources that you did not spend. They do not carry over. And then we check this time track and whoever's furthest back is the next player. In this case, pink would go. So they're gonna take a turn. They're gonna buy this card. They're going to spend uh, two time token, let's say. There we go, they are there. This is going to, I'm gonna draw a new one here. We're gonna scoot this over and put it right there. And then blue would go. And blue's gonna spend uh, one time. They're gonna go there. And blue is gonna buy this one. Then we flip over a new one. It's gonna go right there. Then it's yellow again. And maybe I'll spend a bunch of time on something. So I might go uh, one, two, three, and I'm way up here, which means I might not get a turn for a couple, you know, for a couple of rounds around the table. So that's how that works out, okay? Now, once we all, like I said, pass this threshold here at 30, we are going to add in these, these sort of lifelong goals, if you would. I'm gonna shuffle up these cards, which match the symbol on 30. We're gonna reveal two of them, which are going to be, they, they represent the, um, oh, what do they call them? The reunions, that's it. And then we're gonna shuffle these and put out the six of them in their spots. If you choose to acquire a car when you do the exploring, now again, it's this, this, or now one of these. You pay the cost on one of these two, which are very high, as you can see. So you can pay either one of those costs. And after having done that, you take one of these. These are all scoring bonuses for the end of the game. So for example, this one, every story card, one victory point at the end of the game. Uh, this one over here, let's see, each achievement, three victory points. These are the achievements, right? So each of those three victory points. So if I have a bunch of these, I want this one also. Each set of four colors is going to be four victory points. So those dictate a little bit of what you do down here, right? As well as, of course, the colors down here will dictate what you do. Because you want to make sure that the cards you're flipping are also triggering the ones in your CV. So you can get a whole bunch of these tokens and do a whole bunch on your turn. You can still only do one card during the exploring. You can take one and you can only do one self-growing uh, from the stuff you flipped into the CV. Just one of each at most. And then it you know, comes back over here to the timeline. Once we get to 40, we're going to discard any remaining ones we've got here. We'll get rid of these two. We'll put out two of these from that stack and put out the rest of them, a new fresh uh, batch up there. And we'll keep going till everybody's at or past 50. Now, if you go past 50, which is meant to be when you retire, which is wonderful, uh, then you're gonna lose some victory points. So my last game, for example, I got all the way to 53. That means I lost six points at the end of the game. Not ideal, but I needed it to accomplish something, right? So there you go. 
you're going to be using a scoring pad to figure out all of your victory points. These for the uh, life achievements up here. Any cards in your, in your uh, deck that will score without being in the CV. These are the cards in the CV that score. And then there's also this, which is simply having five points for first and seven, two points for second for having the most symbols in your deck of every one of those kinds of symbols. The year you lose points for being above 50, figure out your total, and you've got your winner. So there you go. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how everything operates. The rule book does give you a guide as to all of the symbology and what it all means. It's pretty good. But I think that's enough for right now. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. That is my story. And I have to say it's a game that immediately charmed me when I first looked at it. I think it's a very stark cover, very colorful though, very playful, but uh, looks well finalized. So I was really intrigued in this one. Ultimately, I think it's a very cute game. It's an engaging one. I think it has some pretty big problems in it though. Uh, but it's um, one that I think does something pretty distinct and engaging. So let's take a look at it. All right, let me, let me tell you what I think here. I'm gonna start with the things I didn't like or didn't like as much, okay, and we'll end up strong. So I'm gonna start with the thing that is, in my opinion, the worst about the game, and that is the game arc. The game is very long. The game could lead to a lot of downtime for certain players at the table, and it's also a very fiddly game. There's going to be quite a bit of manipulating little wooden components up, spending them, manipulating them all the way down, and then uh, waiting for a few rounds while other people who are behind you on the time track go. Then a bunch of manipulation, counting symbols, and then this symbol triggers this one also. So, oh, well, hold on, that's two more. There's a lot of fiddliness in it. So that's my biggest drawback, okay? If you're not someone who does okay with that upkeep, busy work feeling sort of, uh, you know, fiddliness in games, I think that's going to turn you off in this one, in, in this one as well, okay? Things are just okay. Replay value. The journey is going to feel largely the same each time. If you really get into the theme, I think it'll help alleviate that a little bit. But ultimately, the game arc, the, the sort of journey there, will feel kind of the same. The, the way things develop, okay? Tactics, luck, strategy, also... I think it's largely on par with some other deck building games, but the scoring doesn't jive with me. I like the long-term goals across the top. I think those are great. I love the building the, the CV for victory points, completing projects, uh, finding a new job. That's great. I love that stuff. The one part I have an issue with is that scoring in the middle, having the most of each symbol gets you five points. Why? I'm not sure why that's a thing. And it's not something that folks seem to be interested in keeping track of because it detracts from the gameplay experience, right? I'm not engaged in going, ooh, how many of the uh, happy face symbols does everybody at the table have? I better, I better target that. No, you want to go over here and be like, oh, I want to be a writer. I'm going to earn this, write a book. I'm going to buy this, write a book car. I'm going to try to complete that. That's fun. That's a, that's in the story. So though that scoring seems at odds with what the game wants you to do, the fun part of the game, I found that to detract from the overall experience. Also, it's one of those deck building games in which your deck is going to remain relatively small, meaning there's likely to be a bunch of ties there anyway. You know, it'll be like four symbols to four to three. Oh, okay, you have uh, now this other one. You have three, I have two, two. Okay, that's you, and then we tie for second. So, you know, there's too many head-to-head -head opportunities there. Now, the other things I do enjoy. The theme, I think, is lovely. I think they did a really good job with the theme here. It's, again, silly, cartoony, but engaging. It has an air of lightness about it, but it's clearly for grown-ups, you know, who, it's not a, it's not a cutie and, and designed and targeted at kids. Um, yeah, I enjoy the, the story and the um, thematic trappings here quite a bit. 
Also, the aesthetics, I think, are very nice. You know, the cards have lovely illustrations. The tokens, while they are fiddly, work well. They are distinct from each other. Everything looks good on the table. And then lastly, the ease of play. I think they did a pretty good job. Even though the rule book has a couple of inconsistencies, or at the very least, some things aren't that clear. There's no contradictions. There's just some things I wasn't quite sure about, okay? But having said that, I think the game flow is pretty good. It, the turns are a little long. It leads to downtime. But it it can be easily played. And, you know, I could even take my first turn while I'm explaining to everybody else, which is pretty nice. So there you go. That's what I think of my story here. Is it a game I recommend to everybody? No, it's not. It's not even one that I would recommend exclusively to... Um, say, lovers of the theme, or perhaps, you know, people who love deck-building games, you have to check a few boxes here all at once to go out and grab this one, I would say. But I think, hopefully, I've given you sort of enough information and the overview that uh, you can make that decision for yourself. I, myself, I'm going to rate this one a 6 out of 10. I think it's nice, but there are some major problems I personally have with it that keep it from a higher score myself but love this look love this theme this is just beautiful so there you go everybody that's it for me thanks for checking this out my name is z garcia i'm gonna see you on the next one